So I'm going to be demonstrating a 50 ppm CH2F2 test of the SEC 5000 and the Gastron um, gas detector, the model GTM-1000E-F. Um, so now I'm going to put on the 50 ppm CH2F2 and I've got 100 ppm that's been diluted with nitrogen um, and matching both flow rates will dilute it to about uh, 50 ppm. So as you, as you can see, the SEC 5000 sensor is responding to the 0 to 50 ppm, but the Gastron unit still has not shown anything. So our sensor is reading about 50 ppm. Um, and their unit still has not read anything. And if I go into the calibration menu here, you can see that they're actually reading about 42 ppm, and they seem to suppress everything below 5% of the maximum scale of the gas. So these are 0 to 1,000 units spanned with 500 ppm CH2F2, so 5% of 1,000 is 50, and they don't seem to show anything below 50 ppm. So this is a 0 to 500 ppm CH2F2 test. We'll be running the units in series using the Gastron unit as a sample draw, and it'll be pulling the sample through the CH2F2 unit. So both units will be seeing, seeing the same exact gas. So now I will put the gas on there, and start the timer, we're going to be keeping track of a couple of different events. The first one will be when the SEC 5000 responds, and the second when the Gastron unit responds. So the SEC unit is already responding to the gas. The Gastron unit has not responded just yet. Still waiting for the Gastron unit. And it has responded and also gone all the way up to the um, target gas. So we're still waiting for the SEC 5000 to go up to, all the way to the target gas. And the next event we'll check is their time to come back down to zero. Okay, just about there. So I'll mark that and take the gas off. And now we're going to be measuring how long it takes each unit to come back down to zero. So the Gastron unit take, took, took a couple of big steps back down, and now since it's been below 5% of the maximum value, it just pins it right to zero, and you are still waiting for the SEC to um, come all the way back down to zero. The SEC unit doesn't seem to hide any sort of values. It seems to respond to the gas a little bit quicker. So now it's back down to zero, and that will conclude this test. So now I'll be running a similar test to the last one, except instead of looking at the Gastron main screen, we're going to be looking at the uh, calibration screen. So I will also be timing the same events and putting the gas on starting now. So I'll be looking for when the Gastron unit responds, for when the SEC unit responds, when they get up to the target gas, and then target value gas, and then back down to zero. So the Gastron unit has already responded, and so has the SEC.
And the reason this test is important is because it shows all values and not just when it gets within 5% of the target value of the span value, which is 500 ppm, and when it also comes back down to zero. It'll show those actual values. So these units were spanned and, cal and zero calibrated before the test had started. So the Gastron unit is still sitting at about 486, 485. The SEC unit is continuing to go up to the target value. So the SEC unit has just about reached its target value and we're still waiting on the Gastron unit. It doesn't look like it's going to go any higher. So we'll call that good there. And now we'll take the gas off. Now we'll measure their time back down to zero. Both units are responding at about the same speed. Gastron unit takes a couple of big jumps back down. And now it's at its 50 value, so right now it would be reading zero on the main display, but it's not quite showing that here. It's showing the actual value of about 18 ppm. So both units are still continuing to go down. So the SEC unit has reached zero. It came up just a little bit. So we'll time it when it actually sits back down at zero. Okay. And the Gastron unit has also reached zero. So that will conclude this test. So now we'll be doing the same test we did with the CH2F2 unit, but with the C4F6 unit for the SEC 5000 and then also the Gastron detector. So I'll be using 500 ppm C4F6 and timing the response times and then back down to zero. So as soon as I put the gas on, I'll start the timer. And we're just going to be watching the Gastron main display on this test. So the SEC unit's already responded. Gastron unit. And notice how it jumped up from about 48 right to 500. Seems to be that uh, if it gets within plus or minus 5% of full scale, so which is 50 ppm of the target value, it just locks it right in at 500. Okay, so the SEC unit has reached its target value. And now we will take the gas off and time it on how long it takes to get back to zero. Gastron unit has reached zero. And so is the SEC unit. All right, that is it for this test. So now we, we will be doing the same test as before, but instead of watching the Gastron main display, we're going to be watching the calibration display. So we'll be watching the first line of the C4F6, 
So I'll be timing the same events as before. And start the timer. So the SEC unit has responded. Gastron unit also responded. CC unit has just about reached target value. Call that good. And Gastron is still kind of creeping up. Okay, and now we will take the time on how long it takes to get back down to zero. The SEC unit has reached zero. The gas trend is still coming down a little bit. And now it has reached zero. That is it for this test. So now we will do, be doing a test with the interfering gas ethanol on both of the SEC 5000 units, CH2F2 and C4F6, and also the Gastron unit. So I've got a system hooked up here where um, the Gastron unit is pulling a sample through both SEC units that are hooked together and it is pulling a sample from liquid ethanol and it's just going to be taking the vapors. So now we put inlet hose into the can. We'll wait to see what all the sensors do. So the CH2F2 has already gone into an interfering gas warning, which is warning 132. And the output is still reading zero. And the C4F6 has now gone into a 132 warning. And the gas drown detector, we will see an alarm here when it detects the interfering gas, but is still reading normal. And now we can see that both the alarms alarm relays have been triggered here and you heard the alarm and it's reading a CH3F is in range over and we have these LEDs hooked up to alarms 1 and 2 of the CH3F reading each one of these LEDs will indicate um, one alarm of the target gas of either C4F6, CH2F2 or CH3F and that will conclude this test So now we will be doing the second interfering gas test, which is using fluorinant. So again, I have the same setup where the input will be taking gas vapors from the fluorinant liquid, uh, bringing it through each of the, of the gas detectors through the system, and then back into the container. So I'll put that hose in there now. We will sit and wait to see what the detectors do. So 
as you can see, the CH2F2 has gone into a warning 132 and the value is still reading 0. C4F6 is still reading 0 and has now gone into a warning 132. Warning 132 just states that there's an interfering gas present. And the same thing happened with the last interfering gas, where the alarm sounded for the CH3F and gives us a range over and then lit up the alarm LEDs, meaning that the alarm's triggered. So that concludes the test for Florida.